What is going on guys? Welcome to Extreme Daily Drivers. Before we get into today's video, can we just take one second and appreciate the prelude in this light? Oh my god. This thing is killer. So anyway, today's video is awesome, man. This is this is the one everyone's been waiting for because this is when the old commander goes from kind of a uh, boring to badass. So we are going to do suspension in today's video. Today's video is all about suspension. If you guys have any questions about suspension, put it down in the comments. I'll try to answer it. We're going to go over a lot of stuff in today's video. We're going to be replacing lots and lots of parts on the old Commander to get it driving like it's brand new and having that awesome stance and looking cool. So, <laughs> feast your eyes on this display. Holy crap, what is all this stuff? Yeah, man, I've been buying. Been buying a bunch of junk. <laughs> oh man, where do we begin? Where do we begin with all this stuff? Holy crow! All right, so now what you guys are looking at, this is a full suspension rebuild for my 2006 Jeep Commander. Now this is gonna apply to any year. It doesn't matter if you have 2010, 2008, whatever. These parts are all gonna be the same. And what we got here is we got a two inch lift. Um, and with that two inch lift, we got a whole bunch of replacement parts to go along with it. So. Let's start off with how we're going to go ahead and achieve that lift. We are going to achieve that lift with some H and R raising springs. That's right. These aren't lowering springs. These are raising springs. So these are the front springs here and these guys back here, these are the rears. So let's talk about why I went with a spring lift instead of a typical kind of a shock extender lift or um, leveling kit or whatever you guys want to call a very, you know, those popular lifts out there to get your two inch clearance. So the reason I went with the spring lift is because this is the way I know how to kind of raise a car and lower car I always use springs whether it's coilovers or lowering springs or whatever i've always used springs in the past so i'm very familiar with these also i'm very familiar with h and r springs back in the day i had a 2012 civic si and i lowered that with some h and r springs i love the ride and i love the look it gave also too we're actually going to be taking our commander off road we're not just going to park it in a mall and make it look cool so the spring lift is a better way to go if you actually want some kind of off-road performance and it also should just give us a better ride because the springs that are on old Culver Commander back there, they're from 2006, they're old and they're worn. So my goal for the front was to actually build a coilover set because it will make replacing what's currently on the Jeep and putting this on so much easier because I won't have to worry about taking old shocks and springs apart. So what I did was I bought myself a set of, set of springs, we got some new struts, and we have all the hardware to kind of make this happen so we could put this all together in one nice package. So let's talk about struts real quick. Now I had a really hard time finding struts, believe it or not. There's lots and lots of stuff on back order, I'm guessing due to the virus, but I had to look far and wide to find some struts that were gonna fit and that I'm gonna be happy with. So I wanted to go with the Bilstein 4600s, but they were totally out of stock and they had no idea when they were gonna be coming back. Even Bilstein doesn't know. So I started to look at Kony. So if you guys know anything about Miatas, then you know about Kony's. They are a really, really popular strut slash shock upgrade for Mazda Miatas. I've been reading about Kony's for like 20 plus years. So I know they are a really good strut. Now the thing is, is I don't know how they are for off-road because they are not a very popular strut combination for anything that goes on an American car, whether it's a Jeep Commander or a Jeep Wrangler or she's even like a Toyota Tacoma. There really is not a lot of information on the internet about these struts so i'm kind of taking a risk but they were in stock i know they're good and uh they the, the price was decent i wound up getting these online i'll put a link down in the description it'll be a link down in the description for all this stuff but i'm getting these online and i want to say they were about 150 dollars each which really isn't that bad of a deal so moving on to kind of all the other hardware that goes along with kind of building our own coilovers right we got our strut we got our spring now we need some isolators so that's when KYB stepped in. I picked these guys up off of Amazon. This is the lower, uh, this is the lower isolator, right? So this guy slides down here. He's gonna go on like this. It's hard for me to do this one-handed. And then the spring, he's gonna go on over top. <laughs> he's gonna go on over top like this. Boom. And then we're gonna have a bump stop, right? You gotta have a bump stop. We got these off of Amazon too, link down in the description. He's going to go on top of the shock mount. Again, KYB. All right, it got these off Amazon. And then the upper isolator is going to go on. All right, then the isolator goes on top of the top hat. So that's how the front strut goes. 
Again, most of this stuff I got off of Amazon. Really good deal. It does add up though. You know, like these are like $12, not a lot of money. This isolator here comes with, it comes with a strut hat. This was like $40, I'm pretty sure. Um, so yeah, this stuff adds up. This isolator down here, this was uh, $15 or something like that. So, so yeah, in order to make all this work, it costs a little bit, it adds up, but I'm telling you, in the end, we're gonna have a brand new front suspension. So one more thing about the front suspension is it's actually adjustable. Yeah, these conies come with some instructions here. You can actually adjust the rebound and the firmness of the ride. Now, I will say that the way you do it is kind of useless because the entire shock body has to be removed <laughs> from the assembly in order to adjust it. The way you do it is you compress the piston all the way down into the shock body and then you twist the shock body and i think there are five different levels of adjustment inside of here i'm guessing they come in the middle uh number three so we're going to be leaving that all alone but it is an option these also come as shocks for the rear they are pretty pricey which is why i didn't purchase them but uh those are also adjustable and they're much easier to adjust you can actually adjust them while they're on your car but um kind of a cool feature that they are adjustable is pretty neat i haven't seen that before and uh it's too bad that you have to disassemble everything to make some sort of adjustment. So let's go ahead and talk about the rear suspension. Now I really wanted to go Bilstein 4600s front and rear because it's a great bang for your buck and uh, Bilstein is a fantastic shock manufacturer. So I wasn't able to get the fronts. Like I said, they are on back order to pff, who knows when Christmas. So um, I did go with the rears, $75 each, got them off Amazon, really good deal. These are a really, really solid strut. And then again, we've got our H&R raising springs and then we have isolators again for the bottom of the spring as well as the top now it doesn't matter um, they're the same so you get four of the same part number again link down in the description and again these add up uh, 15 dollars each i think they are so you know basically you're looking at 60 dollars worth of rubber isolators which is kind of annoying but we won't have any squeaks the springs will be sitting properly inside the vehicle and it'll be awesome so let's move on real quick to a little bit of maintenance so uh yeah as you guys know 2006 vehicle, 15 years old. It's a Jeep, it weighs 5,000 pounds. It's gonna be super, super hard on all sorts of suspension pieces. So, if you guys have watched my previous videos, you know I did a lot of work on the passenger side, kind of rebuilt all of the suspension on the passenger side, um, as, except for the shock and the uh, strut. In doing so, I realized that there's a lot of parts on this vehicle that are gonna need to be upgraded, need to be replaced, um, just because of national wear and tear. So. One of those things we're gonna be replacing are inner and outer tie rods, okay? Got these off Amazon. As you guys can see the pattern here, I got pretty much buy everything off Amazon. They have great prices. But anyway, inner and outer tie rods. These are Moog, you guys know Moog. So uh, the inners, same part number, okay? It doesn't matter, uh, same part number, again, down in the description. However, the outers, you're gonna have a right and a left, okay? So make sure you're making that distinction if you wanna purchase outer tie rods. Um, the reason I got both is there is a clicking in the steering, which like a lot of you guys probably hear when you take a, when you initially take off from a slow stop, there is a little bit of a clunk and, uh, sometimes that can be related to tie rods. So we're going to go ahead and see, you know, isolate that issue by replacing them. Um, and also they are, like I said, they're really worn. So the last piece of suspension that we're going to be replacing or upgrading, I should say, are upper ball joints. So whenever you raise or lower a vehicle, you screw up the natural alignment geometry that the factory has set um, alignment specs so that your car goes straight down the road and doesn't have you know, abnormal wire, uh, tire wear and everything else. Now when you raise your vehicle, typically your upper ball joints are at a really, really odd angle and what they can basically create is, I think it's caster out or toe out and it's an adjustment that really is maxed out. You can't get it any better. So you either have to replace your upper, upper control arms with something like the, uh, is it JBA? I think JBA makes them. Um, you can do that, or I decided to go a cheaper route. And the reason I did is I won on JBA's website. Now JBA, and if I'm saying this wrong, I apologize, JBA, JBC, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> they make these amazing, amazing upper control arms, and they're gorgeous, and they're beautiful, and they're just, if you're driving off-road, climbing the rocks, and doing the whole bit, they are what you want to get. So I went to their website and I put them in my cart. And for some reason, I had this idea in my head that it was free shipping. I don't know why I thought that. But anyway, these things are 470 bucks. I put them in my cart and it was like $500. And I was like, man, $500, man, that's like a lot, that's a lot of money for some upper control arms. 
there's got to be maybe a better solution. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm spending, maybe I'm kind of overdoing this a little bit. And so I did some more research and I found these SPC upper ball joints, man, and they are badass. They got amazing, amazing reviews. So check them out here. Now these things are, you know, for our commander, link down in the description. We got them off Amazon, you guessed it. And man, these provide a ton of adjustability up top. They have to be pressed in, uh, which is why we're gonna be getting some help in today's video. I'm not gonna be doing it all in my garage. I'm gonna be doing it really none in my garage. But uh, man, these provide all sorts of adjustability. They are greasable, so they have Zerks. You know, put some grease in there if you gotta repack them. But these things, man, they, they are they are well known for being an awesome, awesome upgrade. So I'm taking a little bit of a risk. I'm running my factory upper control arms, but these things were, I think, $130 each. So I saved myself about $300 by going this route. And uh, I think they're gonna be fine for what I'm gonna be using the vehicle for. So one last thing before we start tearing the car apart and getting into this, is I wanna talk about the other really popular lifts that are out there and why I didn't go that way. So the Old Man Emu lift is a really, really popular lift. It's a great, great lift for our Jeep Commanders. Um, I believe they are in back order for quite a long time. And not only are they in back order, but they are at least $1,000. And that's not even if you get like everything that I have here, right? So the price is significant. Um, I was able to kind of put this all together here, not including this tie rod stuff, but just the straight up suspension here. I was able to put all of this together for right around $800. So I saved a couple hundred dollars. I think these are really, really good parts. And I think this is gonna give me a very, very comparable lift to the Old Man Emu. Um, I know the Old Man Emu is tried and true. It definitely works. Again, it's great, but it's the fact that it's not necessarily available at this moment and that I can get this stuff to my door like I did in two days, from mostly from Amazon and I'm saving myself several hundred dollars. So another really popular lift are the Bilstein 5100s. Those are the ones that have the adjustable perches in the front. And those have really good reviews and they're really, really good sh uh, shock slash strut assembly. Those are what I ran on my Tacoma back in the day. But the reason I didn't go with those is because you can't set the front strut at stock height. It has to be elevated a little bit. And then when you add it, a raising spring on the front of it, it winds up lifting the front end too much and uh, didn't want to go that route. So that's the reason why I didn't go with the 5100s. So let me pack all this stuff up. We're going over to my buddy Junior's place. He's a mechanic. He's gonna help us out. He's got a lift there. He's got all sorts of air tools. So if you're running anything crazy like a clevis bolt that we can't get off or something along those lines, he's gonna be able to help us out with that. And most importantly, is he has a really, really, really awesome spring compressor. And when you're doing these big time springs on a big time heavy vehicle, you don't want to be going to Harbor Freight and buying their little their little clips and, and, and doing it with a ratchet. It's just not the smart way to do it. You can do it that way, and I've done it that way in the past. I've done lift kits for uh, full-sized um, Chevy Silverados as well as Tacomas, and I did it that way. But yeah, it's a little sketchy. Junior's got an awesome spring compressor. We'll have these things knocked out in no time, and uh, we'll get this thing. We'll get the Commander looking awesome. All right, guys, it's been a couple days. It's been a couple days since the lift's been on, and I'm sorry that I didn't actually film a lot of it. I really didn't have time between my buddy Junior and myself working on the car. There wasn't a lot of time to film. We ran into some issues, nothing that you wouldn't typically run into, just stuck bolts, stuff like that. But we got it all finished, and uh, I feel terrible about it. But I did film one little step of this in my own garage. And let me show you that, replacing the uh, front bushings for the front sway bar. So we are gonna be installing something in today's video. We're gonna be installing these front bushings from TRW. Uh, I got a link down in the description if you wanna pick these up. Now they come in two different sizes. These are the big boys, the 340s for the, uh, the bigger engine, right? So if you got the 4.7 or the Hemi, you're gonna to wanna to get these guys. If you got the V6, you're gonna get the smaller guy. Um, $16, really good deal. And they're made out of thermoplastic, not rubber. So hopefully they'll last longer than stock ones. We'll get these open here. I got these in the mail and I was like, man, these are really big for sway bar bushings. But when you got a big car, <laughs> you got big bushings, check these things out. So really easy to install, keep your car on level ground. You don't want to jack it up for this install. Just uh, crawl underneath, it's 21 millimeter bolts. You're gonna pop them off, pull the old rubber uh, bushings off and slide these new guys on. On this passenger side bushing, you could really see where it's cracked and just dry rotted and just generally in poor shape. So the new bushings are gonna be awesome.
Here's the new verse old. Here's the old guy. Pretty blown out, but honestly not terrible for, you know, 15 years. And here's a new guy. Huh? Pretty sweet. He's gonna fit in there. Real nice. Now the directions with the new bushings don't say they need lube, but I have some of this prothane stuff left over from when I did all the bushings on the prelude, so I'm gonna go ahead and use this. Alright guys, we got it. Mission accomplished. Little tip when installing and uninstalling these, kind of doing an X pattern. In other words, top, passenger, um, bottom pa uh, driver, then top driver, and then bottom passenger. The bottom ones are a lot easier to get to than the top bolts. So yeah, reinstall, same way. All right, so before I show you the final reveal, I must admit, I did more than just suspension. We did wheels and tires too. That's right, you know, we aren't gonna just half-ass it. We're going full on with this truck. And check it out. I know you've already seen it in the thumbnail, but let me know down in the description what you think of this beast. Let me know what kind of questions you have as well. I'll be happy to answer anything. Now, the wheels and tires, okay? This was a uh, very hard choice, but once I found these, man, it made it so easy. So I got these from a company called Quadratech. I'll have a link down in the description, as always. They are 17 by eight and a half, and I believe they're plus 14 which means I do not need to run any kind of spacer to get this awesome flush look. All right, let me look down the profile of the car here, huh? Is this perfect or what? Now for tires, one of my favorite tire companies are always Toyos. I ran them out of Miata back in the day. Always, always loved Toyos. And these are the Toyo Open Country 3s. And man, they are awesome. Got these from Tire Rack. I'll put a link down in the description. They are 265 7017, which are the biggest tires you can run on a Jeep Commander. So stop asking on Facebook. Stop asking everywhere else. 265 7017 are the biggest you're going to be able to run on a two inch lift. And if you're not lifted at all, don't even try to run these. There's no way they're going to fit. I'm already getting some rubbing. Uh, mostly it's back here. It's really hard to see because of the lighting, but we're going to have to do the pinch weld mod. If you guys don't know what that is, it's going to be featured in an upcoming video. So we're going to be making a change there to the body so that when I make a turn, we don't rub back there. So what do you guys think of this lift, huh? It is almost level and I love that there's a little bit of a rake to it because if there's anything I can't stand is when the front is higher than the rear, which does happen on a lot of these leveling lifts. I see them on Facebook all the time and they just don't look all that great. So I love the way this turned out, man. The H&R Rising Springs did a fantastic job. Definitely got enough clearance here. Um, and in the rear too, totally enough clearance back here. Um, no rubbing in the rear or anything like that. I think the tire fits in that wheel well Just as bad as good as you can do it. Um, the car rides like it's brand new. I mean it, it, it rides like it's absolutely brand new No noises, no clunking, no clicking, no anything uh, Just rides super super smooth uh, but still firm and uh, I just ready to drive this thing anywhere right now, man. It's it's just ready to go Can't wait to get this thing off-road put this wheel and tire package to the test as well as of course the lift and see what this thing is capable of so over the past week i added a couple more things to it i got these avs in channel window guards i love these things they just make driving with the windows down so much more pleasant really clean up the dirty air that's coming in the car so they are awesome and i had to throw on a little culver command sticker here i couldn't resist it <laughs> so yeah the sticker's there to let everyone know that we mean business so anyway guys that's gonna do it for this one let me know down in the comments what you think of the old cobra commander man we are just getting started in this thing it is really really starting to come along though it's going from bland to cool and we're gonna take it to awesome and the overland thing man i'm hooked on the overland thing we got so much more awesome stuff coming so we could take this thing absolutely anywhere so anyway thank you so much for watching we'll be back next tuesday hit that like button subscribe share and we'll see you next week later